Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great as always. And for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're continuing on with our VGC Series 10 content and featuring another rental card team it is from my good friend, Johnny Hacks. He has provided teams before on the channel, which we've always enjoyed uh, featuring. And today we've got another cracking one. We've got a Dialga based team and it's a, it's a restricted that we haven't featured yet on the channel. So we're really looking forward to getting into this one today. Uh, as you can see, we've got the Dialga there, the Life Orb, so giving it a little bit of an extra bit of power when it does get those attacker moves off, Earth Power, Flash Cannon, kind of the staples that it's going to rely on here. Uh, then you can kind of see the, the big elephant in the room, which is going to be the Blacephalon, which is uh, something that we don't see that often, but works so nicely with the telepathy ability on Dialga, which gives you immunity to any kind of big spread moves that would normally hit you, like the Mind Blown. And with the Choice Scoff there, it is a really nice option. You've got trick there as well to really punish other opposing Pokemon on the opposite side of the field and then Shadow Ball and Flamethrower just to give it some kind of uh, attacking options outside of just that mind blown if you've not got that favorable partner like Dialga next to it. Support and Cast gonna see the Amoongus there it works well in Trick Room pairs up nicely with Dialga and makes a nice call between that and Incineroar. Got the Incineroar there with the safety goggles giving you a little bit of immunity from redirection especially like Rage Powder from Amoongus and when you're in front of Azernius and it is trying to Geomancy up and then we've got Araquanid. It is picking up a little bit of usage recently so it's nice to be able to see it kind of featured here. Obviously got that wide guard which is a really nice tech to kind of protect the team from all of those spread attacks that you're going to see and then rounding off with Incineroar's best buddy at the minute Rillaboom. So team looks great looking forward to trying it out today as always we will have a couple of games with the team kind of pilot it, showcase it, uh, talk through it and then we'll wrap up with the rental code at the end of the episode. So I'll sit back hope you enjoyed today's episode and without further ado we'll get into game one okay, first up today we have a volcarona shadow rider calyrex tyranitar tapu lele whimsicott and dragonite this team looks fire this team looks great the tyranitar inclusion in there is really nice uh, obviously gives weather disruption gives a dark typing as well um, and uh, to a certain extent i guess it, uh, 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 something that they can use under trick room if that is an issue i do think blacephalon is going to be pretty good here uh, so I'm kind of tempted just to lead Blacephalon Dialga. <sighs> Got to watch out for the T-Tar lead, but uh, I don't think it matters too much. Um, the Whimsicott obviously is an issue. That's the only thing. Like Whimsicott, we could lead Incineroar Blacephalon. Um, and then just go for Mind Blown or just go for Shadow Ball. Um, or we could just lead Incineroar It's just we've got to stop the Tailwind. Like, if we go Blacephalon, the Tailwind next to Calyrex is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Um, they may go for something like Lele, though, up top, you know. So, um, yeah, let's go Blacephalon, Incineroar. Let's go Dialga. And I think probably, ooh, Araquanid, Boom, Amoongus. Maybe Boom, maybe Boom. Although... It's just, it would be nice to change the terrain, right, from, from Psychic Terrain. The Dragonite's going to be tough for Boom to come in against. The is going to be tough for Boom to come in against. And that's where Araquanid would have been good. But, <clears throat> we'll see how we get on. We'll see how we get on. See what my opponent brings. Okay, so Volcarona and Wimmy. That's actually all right, because we can, we can literally go Mind Blown here and fake out into Wimmy. And we should do some nice, nice, big, fat damage. Um, do we mind blown? Or do we just go flamethrower? I think we got mind blown. I know we're taking damage on our Incineroar. Is this too much of an, like, an obvious play where we fake out the Whimsicott, you know? Uh, where we could potentially go, like, parting shot here. Or just pull a switch straight into uh, Dialga, to be honest, to avoid any damage. And we keep Incineroar on the back, so we've got a good switch in for uh, Blacephal on the next turn. Because Volcarona, like, let's face it, it's not putting on any pressure to a Blacephal on here. We may see Tito come in. Okay, it's Tapu Lele. Yeah. Okay, I want to get around. But I guess they probably want to try and get uh, the Tailwind up. Which is fine. The thing is, with the Psychic Train coming onto the field, it's a little bit awkward for my opponent to use Taunt if they got it on something like Whimsicott, you know? 
And the Lele is going to take an absolute ton of damage here from this Blacephalon. Mind blowing. So the, the telepathy kicking in, which is nice. Let's see how much damage we can do. And we'll take the Wimmy down to its sash, undoubtedly. Bop. Wow, Wimmy, no sash. Okay. Well, the Tailwind is up. The issue about doing this is it obviously um, gives us a bit of an issue where Calyrex can kind of come onto the field now and start that snowball. And we do need to be very careful around something like the Lele with Taunt. Um, what we could potentially do is protect our Alga Switcher into Rillaboom. Because then we get rid of the terrain, we got fake out the next turn, and then we can we can trick room with Dialga. We should take at least one attack from the Calyrex on the switching. Um, and if they go expand and post, they probably likely got Moonblast into Dialga. If if not taunt, I would imagine. Depends if they've got it. So Dialga just protecting here. You want to avoid as much damage as possible. Astral Barrage coming out, yeah, boom. Still gonna take a hefty, hefty chunk of damage here, but we should take this with the Assault Vest. Gives you that nice kind of buffer to be able to switch in on that big attack and a Dazzling Gleam, yeah. So we'll take both. And we got access to Fake Out now, so we can get the Trick Room up this next turn. <laughs> Unless something like that happens, which is super annoying, but at least we avoid uh, giving the Calyrex a boost the next turn because uh, by getting Incineroar onto the field that makes it a little bit easier but it's still annoying, it's still annoying to have to deal with that. Um, but like I say we're, we're not in a bad spot right now because I think Incineroar has it got Throat Chop, Throat Chop Johnny give it? No, I'm parting shot on Flare Blitz and Roll, okay. We'll fake out the Lele, we'll get this Trick Room up now. The Lele may switch out, so you've got the Psychic Drain to come back in. Uh, oh, wow, they protect the Calyrex. That's nuts. That's nuts. I think they just sealed their fate there now. Because um, we just double into the Calyrex the next turn. And we don't really care what the Lele is doing, unless it keeps critting us, because uh, it has already ruined Rillaboom's day. But we're all right we're all right um do we just double up into cat well i mean ov it's obvious they protected the last turn they've either got a switch which they may do because they're in a bit of a tight spot uh, or they stay in and just get decimated here and then that is the end of the game yeah because the flash cannon will be more than enough to get the color x here and this is the kind of thing that you kind of see we you know with these sort of teams the color x ones that they're quite fragile in regards to if you can get a trick room up against them uh, then they fall apart pretty easily unless they got like specific trick room checks Jesus these dazzling gleams are like ridiculous is that specs do you think maybe could be has he used anything other than dazzling gleam I don't think so no so it could be specs Lele Tailwind Pit is out for my opponent so gotta bear that in mind now depending on what comes in as their last Pokemon but we're I mean, we're sitting in a good spot, right? Uh, is the the Volcarona. Um, I think we take an attack from Volk. We'll just Flare Blitz and we'll go for the Flash Cannon. Like I say, if we suspect the, the specs on the Lele, which I think it is from the damage it's doing from the Dazzling Gleam, which may have been enough to get the Rillaboom without the crit anyway, um, it's not going to protect. And uh, Incineroar are going to be able to deal with the Volcarona pretty handily by itself. So, like I say, we're not, I don't think we need to worry about taking... Um, I mean, they could overheat into the Dialga. That's probably the only thing that they got that can knock us out at this stage. Heatwave, we should take, even from this range. We'll, we'll find out. We'll find out. Ooh, we don't. We don't. Mm. But a Flare Blitz is going to be enough. And a Shadow Ball. We kind of pin it from both from both ends now. So when the Trick Room ends, we've got Blacephalon to kind of wrap this one up. And it's nice to get to see uh, Blacephalon do some work. Uh, it, it's always one of those Pokemon where, you know, you come into a team preview, team, like the start of the episode, and you think, are we gonna get to see much of Blacephalon today? Um, so it's, it's nice to kind of kick off where we see it do a nice bit of work, especially against the Calyrex team, which is, you know, one of the, the more 
prominent and uh, centralized and restricted that we've got in the format and uh, we do pick up a win so very good game to my opponent and a nice one for us to kick off with today uh, with the team we will jump straight into game two of today's episode friend. okay next up we've got nicole playing a reggie alecky tornadoes kyoga cortana lander Asterian, and incinero team pretty standard looking kyoga team i like the inclusion of the cortana there it makes it a bit more scary i guess but um gives a bit more offense as well with the uh, the steel typing especially when you've got that trick room support uh, the tailwind support um and you've got that electro web support the one thing that you would say is if we can again get a trick room set up against this team then we're in a good position and it's kind of common threat trend that you're seeing in series 10 at the minute you know like tailwind is quite a predominant kind of speed control mechanic for teams so trick room is always the first thing that you think of to kind of combat that so um it's just about being able to kind of get that set up because you obviously have to worry about obviously the taunt from the um the tornadoes which could be a little bit of a problem and the other thing to consider is the cortana will give dialga a few few problems um just in regards to having like sacred sword and being able to get some big fat damage onto us early on um so i think really boom dialga as a lead's good i think we probably do want incineral in here the double fake out's going to be nice and then do we want a raquinid a raquinid's pretty good if we can get the trick room up there's not much my opponent's got that uh, Araquanid needs to really worry about um, and between Incinero and Dialga I think we should be able to handle the Cartana pretty well so let's see what my opponent brings to this one I can imagine it would probably be well are we going to see Incinero Incinero Tornadus potentially I don't know they've got to be in mind to try and stop the trick room you know yeah there we go we guessed it right bingo we got it um so i mean yeah it's a little bit awkward because now we need to probably switch in incineral protect dialga here because i think what they're going to do is they're going to fake out dialga uh, and go for the taunt to stop the trick room whereas we want to try and put ourselves in a position where uh we've got the active fake out next to um the other thing that you've got to consider as well the incineral could have roll so that is something that we need to kind of uh think about but our main priority is getting our trick room up and we do not want to be taunted so we've got to try and um set up some sort of support to be able to do that and i feel with the kyoga not on the field at the minute the worst case scenario is we see a parting shot from the opposing incinero but i think the the situation that they're in right now forces their hand to go for the fake out you know and um, we'll soon find out as we release that protect from the dialga and fake out yeah and probably a taunt or maybe even a hurricane into now nah, they go for the taunt so now we've got yeah i think the thing that we need to worry about now is do they have a roll or taunt on the incineral it's always a nice option to have but we can go for the fake out into the tornadoes uh we may see the tornado switch here because at this point you know my opponent has to kind of concede that fake out's coming um and we are going to be able to get the trick room up as we see kyoga come onto the field and we may see the incinero go for that parting shot so we i mean we had to kind of check the tornadoes in case they they did stay in because then our turns kind of null and void and we don't get the trick room off the snarl's not ideal but it's not the worst thing in the world um because next turn we can pull a double switch if we want we want to reset those uh special attack drops and probably preserving dalga is not a bad idea you know we can pull a switch to iraq when it and go for a parting shot into the kyoga i think it's probably a nice nice idea to do uh, get Red Boom and uh, Araquanid on the field at the same time would be good. It also keeps our Incineral in the back, so keeping in mind that, you know, the Cartana could potentially be the fourth Pokemon for my opponent. Um, we're switching into Rillaboom here. No, we're switching into Araquanid here. So just keeping that Intimidate in the back, you know, it helps against the Cartana for sure because that is going to be a match that the matchup that could be a little bit awkward without without the uh, incident and dialga especially for rillaboom and iraq when to deal with are we gonna see oh we i mean we could bring in dialga into this slot again you know but it feels like if we bring mm, yeah let's bring rillaboom in let's bring rillaboom in could bring dialga in but like I said, you know, we'll stick with what we... Oh, the U-turn. 
Not ideal, but not the worst. What's Nicole going to bring in now? Is it going to be that Tornadus or is it going to be the Cortana? Cortana coming in now would be a good call if it is in the back. Um, yeah, there we are. There he is. There he is. Cortana. An ice beam coming out. Nice. Yeah, that is a nice play from my opponent for sure. We've got to be very careful around the Cortana right now. But we do have an active fake out. We do have a way to... We could potentially double into it. I think the Kyogre is pretty threatened here um, the grassy terrain being on the field is not ideal uh, but I don't think the Kyogre stays in so I think we could get some decent damage onto the Cortana here with a liquidation uh, since the rain's up it's not going to do massive damage but any damage at this point onto the Cortana is good I can imagine either the Kyogre switching out or just protecting this turn the thing is, it's probably likely going to be the Incineroar that comes in on that Kyogre slot. Yeah. And we could have liquidationed into that slot, kind of predicting it. Yeah. And that would have given us such an advantage and just faked out into the Cortana. But, like I say, the damage onto the Cortana is going to be useful. Kind of frees up the field now for us to get uh, Incineroar onto the field this next turn with Kyogre kind of not, not, not in the picture. So... Not lost a great deal here, but we we're not an amazing an amazing spot. Uh, but the the health restoring here is decent. Um, and we probably want to protect, get Incineroar in. How many turns of Trick Room we've got left? Because we need to keep that in mind. We've got two. Okay. Yeah, I can't afford a Raquinid to take uh, a Leaf Blade. Not under grassy terrain, even if it is intimidated. So we're hoping at this point, I mean, they could Sacred Sword into the Rillaboom slot, predicting the Incineroar to come in. It would be a kind of a, a play that would make sense, uh, especially with active fake out from my opponent's side of the field. Um, fake out into Araquanid, and we're going to see Leaf Blade into the Araquanid as well. So that's all right. Mm, I'd imagine the Cortana is probably grassy terrain leaving the field. So that helps us out a bit against the Cortana. I think what we're going to do is parting shot straight out into the Cortana and go for a liquidation into the Incineroar here. Because um, I think the Cortana is likely a salt vest. Uh, just for the fact that it didn't protect on that fake out where it could have done and saved itself some damage. Um, yeah, the Kyogre probably likely to come back in here. Yeah. And then we can get Dialga in. Mm, yeah, and then, yeah, all right. <laughs> Tornado's coming in, so we need to be a little bit, a little bit careful around. I mean, that damage is really good. That's minus one in the rain. Um, and the parking shot going to be nice. Where we can get Dialga potentially on the field now. So we don't really want to bring in Cineral. Um I mean, I mean it, Rillaboom. The only thing that we would do to bring Rillaboom here would be fake out and then attack into um, into the Tornadus. But do we bring Dialga in? It's just Dialga doesn't really have the firepower against the Kyogre, but I think Dialga is probably better because it distracts my opponent. A little bit from being able to just attack into Araquanid here. Uh, and they have to be more aware that the Trick Room could potentially go back up again. Which is not ideal for my opponent. The rain does stop, which isn't great. Mm. But in one respect, it's quite good for us in the fact that Hurricane isn't 100% accurate. Now we could just double into the, the Tornadus here. I think that's probably the best play. Yeah, because they're going to taunt to shop, stop this trick room. Uh, if they go for thunder, it's not... Yeah, it does hit. Which is a little bit unfortunate, because it's out of the rain. We do take it. Poof, their life orb auger. Jesus. Jesus. Um, <laughs> but we should get rid of the tornadoes here. A life orb auger. That's nuts. Um... We do take that, so that's some good EV in there on the old spider. We are taunted though, so we've got to bear that in mind as well. So it's not going to be plain sailing. Um, 
an earth power probably will get the cortana so it's probably good at this point to switch in incineroar for a raquinid earth power the cortana mm, is it gonna get it though that's the problem that's the problem right That's the problem. Is the Earth Power going to get it if it is if it is a salt fest? I don't know. I don't know. Because we're likely going to see uh, Sacred Sword into Dialga. So the, the Intimidate definitely going to be helpful here. Sacred Sword. Oh my god. mean what you do what you do in that situation what you do and if we see an origin pulse here we're done now oh, they got ice beam okay well it's not too bad <sighs> critical critical hit not ideal but what have they got in the back what have they got in the back they got ogre they got incineral incineral makes a lot of sense to come in now get the ogre out go after the rillaboom um, Poison and Cinnaroll is going to be really tough to, to manage. It's going to be really tough to manage. But I mean, we can go for Fake Out. The thing is, right, do they switch Cartana out here and protect Kyogre? You know, that would be that would be the thing that I would imagine they'll probably do, right? Where we, So we could, we could do this. And predict this. Predict them switching the Cartana out, which I think they're going to do and protect Kyogre. Oh, they don't. Wow. Okay. Just bring in Incineroar. That's not ideal. Oh, we probably lose Rillaboom now. I think this player's just lost us the game. Uh, oh, they do have Detect. All right. So that's not the worst thing in the world. But yeah, the Araquanid taking that thunder out of the rain has put us in a really awkward spot. But, I mean, there's not really much we can do with uh, the boom. The boom now. Because we need Araquanid to help deal with. We needed Araquanid and Dialga to deal with the uh, the Incineroar here. Um, actually, what we could do you turn into Incineroar, switch into a Raquanid, and then we get the Intimidate again. But if we lose Rillaboom, then Kyogre kind of just wins this. But I'm hoping they go fake out into Incineroar here to protect the Cortana and then Sacred Sword. Let's hope they don't get a crit again. Jesus. Scope lens Cortana for you, isn't it? It's Scope lens Cortana. There's nothing we can do about that, you know. That's what it is. Um, hopefully, we can check my opponent's team out, but the crits have saved them. Uh, yeah. Saved their bacon. We had opportunities, you know, in this match where we could have we could have just pinned pinned my opponent, and we talked about it through the turns. So. Just a little bit unfortunate how it has worked out with the critical hits, but it does happen sometimes, and we are going to say good game because there's no point of playing on now because the Kyogre in the back um, <clears throat> can just come in and wipe us out. But uh, yeah, Cortana doing a lot of work in that one. You know, uh, it's a little bit disappointing to uh, have the outcome like that. And like I say, we could probably look back at that and say there's definitely points in that match where we called switch-ins, but we didn't really act on it like we maybe did and played a bit passive covering things and certain things like that. So good game to my opponent, Cortana with the scope lens kicking our butts, uh, but we'll move on to our next opponent in the episode. Our third and final game of today's episode is against an Entai, Mimikyu, Shadow Rider, Calyrex, Rillaboom, Glastria, and Urshifu. Um, interesting team for sure, especially with the Mimikyu inclusion there, you know, it's got the potential to... Um, set trick room up for the Glastria and with the disguise it makes it a little bit more difficult to deal with obviously has things like taunt as well which can shut our trick room down from uh, Dialga um, and obviously under trick room Glastria are going to be a little bit more awkward to deal with especially with um, 
if it is a salt vest, which you would kind of imagine it probably is. Urshifu, are you the dark or the water? Uh, probably water type, I would imagine. So, how are we going to approach this one? Like, Blacephalon could be good here, but the Mimikyu, the Mimikyu makes it a little bit more difficult, uh, for sure. Um, but I do, I am kind of tempted to bring Blacephalon up top, because they haven't got any Tailwind. Um, and it gives us a real easy way to at least set, uh, I think, a, set our Trick Room up as well. Um, I think Arachnid's incredibly good here, uh, especially under Trick Room. Um, and probably need Incineroar. Like, I would like Rillaboom, but the Glastria kind of... Uh, no, because Dialga, I think, can deal with Glastria. Glastria. Uh, it's just good. We've got to be very careful with how we deal with it because I think they're going to be able to hit us super hard under Trick Room, but they're not going to enjoy taking Flash Cannons. And like a double up Flash Cannon, Grassy Glide might be enough. Maybe. Who knows? Might come down to Blacephalon dealing with it, but Entai and Mimikyu. Okay. I don't think we mind blow here because it's just a waste against the Mimikyu. I mean, the one thing we could do is go mind blown uh, and flash cannon, and that would get rid of the Mimikyu, and then that Mimikyu is gone for good, and we'll do some decent damage to effort in the process. Um, we could trick room as well. But it's likely we get taunted, maybe, from the Mimikyu. I don't know if it's going to taunt, but it may not. We could. The other option is going for the Earth Power into the Entai, which, which allow them to set the Trick Room up, potentially. Ooh, it's scarfed. Okay, it's outspeeding us, so that is that done. Uh, that's not good. Let's see what this Mimikyu does. Okay, scarfed Entai. Totally ignore that, and a play rough. God dang. Could have just trick roomed. The Earth Power will do a nice chunk of damage. Take that down. So we get a trade off, but it's a pretty bad one from our point of view, to be honest. Um, because now Calyrex probably comes. Calyrex definitely comes in, and there's not very much we can do against it. I mean, we can. We got a rack when it, so we can we can wide guard. Okay, it's Urshifu. In the Calyrex for later. Okay. Let's go for Liquidation into the Mimikyu and let's switch into the Boom. Because I think as long as we got a Raquinid to help us set the Trick Room up with Dialga, we're not in a, a terrible place, especially if Calyrex is in the back. And we just need to get rid of the, the Urshifu. Likely we've got close combat here, I would imagine. It's not really going to be able to do very much. Jeez, that and a play rough. This is where, like, Incineroar would have been very, very useful. Shadow Claw as well. Okay, into a Raconade. Well, we take that pretty well. Liquidation going to come out and break that disguise finally. Um, so at least we got the Grassy Glide as an option this next turn, but again, we need to really. Uh, think about preserving uh, Rillaboom here rather than uh, just letting it kind of go down. So the fake out is going to be useful. Is a liquidation going to be enough to get the Mimikyu? Probably not. Let's just check this Urshifu. I need to check my forms. It is a dark fighting type. So Leech Life actually not going to be too bad onto it. But it's just whether or not <sighs> do you protect with, with, with Urshifu here? I'll switch it out. I think you probably protect it. But do we want to risk the no protect? But we kind of, we're going hard in on this now. Okay, so. And there's Kali. Big Kali. Nice to see the Mimikyu protect here, but I doubt it will. I think it's going to Shadow Claw. A rack on it. I mean, we, we're taking that pretty well. And then we get a bit of health back here. Uh, it doesn't do too bad damage, to be honest. I mean, a Grassy Glide probably would get the Calyrex this next turn. 
Um, we probably want to get rid of the... Do we want to get rid of the Mimikyu? Not yet. I think we want to try and get... I think we want to try and maneuver Dialga onto the field in his next turn. Uh, and, and Trick Room. And Trick Room. So let's Wide Guard and get Dialga in. And then we can... Like, if we get the Trick Room up, we kind of win this game, I think. The Scarfed Entai, though, is a little bit annoying. Uh, it's always something that I forget about as well. You know, Scarfed Entai. I see Entai and never instantly think of the Scarf. And the amount that we've played on the channel, I should really consider that that is... That is something that a lot of players are kind of going to and, and, and relying on. So there's a Shadow Claw critical hit. Not ideal. <laughs> Not ideal at all. Now, do we go for the White Guard again, or are they going to just attack into Dialga? That's the question. That's the question. Because we could just go after the Mimikyu. I think it's probably better just to wide guard. Just to kind of cover bases and go for the Trick Room. They could Trick Room as well with Mimikyu. I think that makes a lot of sense here. Where they're like, the Trick Room's coming. I'm going to Trick Room. Uh, or they could just decide to just keep attacking with Mimikyu like they have been doing, you know. Substitute. That's alright. And then just go and Shadow Claw. Okay. That crit not really helping us out here because... You know, in all honesty, we would have had a Raquanid still, which makes things a little bit more, a little bit easier for us to deal with. Um, the problem is we can't just ignore the Calyrex now. Now, we could protect this next turn to stall out a turn of Trick Room, but it may not as well. Kind of like we want to concentrate a bit more into the Mimikyu here, but at the same time, can we afford to allow the Calyrex to get an Astral Barrage off and Probably not, but it is probably likely going to protect, right? You've got to imagine it's going to protect. But like I say, uh, it's just annoying. It's just annoying because do we go for the Mimikyu? Or are they going to protect the Calyrex? They've got to protect the Calyrex because they, they definitely suspect a double in. But at the same time, I don't know. I feel like I'm just going to go for it. Yeah, so they didn't protect the Calyrex. Hopefully a flash cannon's enough to get it. So Shadow Sneak coming out into the boom. I can take that pretty well. Please be enough. Please be enough with the life orb. It is. Okay. Like Mimikyu's the one thing we don't need to worry about like massively here. <sighs> Urshifu is the uh, the next big problem. But a flash cannon and a grassy glide or a wood hammer should be enough to get it. And there's enough trick room turns. Well, wood hammer probably better now. Woodhammer, yeah, Woodhammer, Woodhammer. The great friend. We've got to worry about Sucker Punch as well, you know. Like, Sucker Punch is still going to do a, a, a fair amount of damage, but I'm just going to double in on the Urshifu again. They may protect here. May protect. <clears throat> but again, it's like, yeah, they're not protecting it. So we'll get it. Ooh, there's a sash. At least we're not going to take too much recoil with boom, and then we should be able to deal with the Mimikyu quite easily. And it, you can see from this match that it's 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 so easy to kind of get yourself sucked into a mind frame where you're like, are they going to protect it? Are they going to protect that Pokemon here? Because it's in such an awkward position. But you got to think like the the trade off uh, in those situations where it's like, okay, if they don't protect and they attack, we probably lose the game. So it's like, do we just cover bases where the Mimikyu's not really doing too much? And then we can kind of go from there. So they're, they're difficult. They're, they're coin flips at the end of the day. So you see the Shadow Sneak come out from the uh, the Mimikyu. Going to be able to pick up the knockout on the Rillaboom. But this Flash Cannon Life Orb should be enough to get the Mimikyu here for sure. As uh, Dialga are going to be the last Pokemon standing. And uh, after losing Blissephalon so early on um, to that Entai... It didn't look too good, but we managed to be able to kind of pull this one back and uh, and pick up a win. So, 
face two Shadow Rider Calyrex teams today, I believe. But good game to my opponent. And what we'll do now, friends, we'll hop over and just remind you all of today's rental team. Right, friends, here is today's rental team. And a big shout out to Johnny again for providing us with this team today. It's been a lot of fun to feature on the channel. And uh, I think goes to show that uh, Dialga definitely a good option within Series 10 and definitely has some potential to do very well, especially with things like Araquanid that can come in and really support well under that trick room. And the Blacephalon with the Mind Blown is just a really cool uh, move and an option to have, especially when you've got Telepathy Dialga that's not going to take any damage from it in a, a way to really pressure opponents uh, if they haven't got that instant kind of Tailwind or Pokemon that's going to be able to outspeed. Like, you got a little bit punished in that last one against the Entai, but all in all, Blacephalon, a very fun Pokemon. I'm a little sad that we didn't get to use the trick today because I think it can be a nice option to punish opposing uh, teams as well, and it's a really nice option with the Choice Scarf there just to kind of switch items and then um, lock them into something that, that's not more uh, favorable. But uh, if you do try the team, as always, please let me know down in the comment section below uh, what your thoughts are on the team. And if you've got any rental teams of your own, please let me know, provide them, and I will try and feature them on the channel. We've had some really nice requests and interesting requests recently about things to uh, feature. One of them was Mill Tank. So I'm gonna, I've actually started putting that together. So maybe next week we'll have that on the channel and that'll be a lot of fun because uh, Mill Tank surprisingly fits into a bit of a niche that could work in series 10 so we'll wait for that one keep an eye out for it but uh we'll wrap it up there friends have a great rest of your day whatever you're up to and we'll be back on the channel very soon with some more series 10 content so until then take care of yourselves and bye bye